Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. Last night was kind of exciting around here in Colorado. Karen and I were having dinner at a restaurant, and we saw a tornado. It was probably about, oh, 20 miles away, but it was huge. And it was, for a while, it was heading right toward us. So it was kind of ex exciting. Uh, it was going 10 miles an hour, so I figured I could always get in the car and drive faster than 10 miles an hour, but it was still fun. It hit a few farms, um, but that's all the damage it did. Um, <clears throat> so have you ever um, asked a pastor to pray? And they go on and 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 on. Like maybe it's a dinner or something, and the pastor just goes on about everything. Um, that has always bothered me. Long, long prayers uh, seem to me like they're done more to impress people than they are really praying to God. And a lot of times, you know, prayers I hear, like even in church or like on the TV and church services, that the prayers seem to be aimed more at the people and trying to convince them of something than they are at God and asking or, you know, petitioning God with something. Well, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 gets at that a little bit. Verse, verse 1, it says, As you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't make rash promises and don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God is in heaven. And you are on earth. So let your words be few. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Uh, restless dreams, too many words, makes you a fool. Well, there's a lot of pastors that are fools, and probably even me at uh, some point or another. So, you know, we've been talking about how Jesus is in the Old Testament. So how does this relate to Jesus? Well, in the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 6 of Matthew, Jesus says this. He says, when you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. And then Jesus says, pray like this, and he says the Lord's Prayer, which, you know, Lord's Prayer is an amazing prayer, how succinct it is and how it has everything in it. You know, our daily bread, uh, forgiveness, um, all of the really key things, daily bread being the needs that we have for this day, all the really key things are all in that Lord's Prayer, uh, naming who God is and where he is. And um, it's just an amazing, amazing prayer. It's short. It's succinct. It's been around for 2,000 years, and we say it every Sunday um, just before communion, at our church anyway. So, um, you know, God already knows what you need and what you want. So your prayers don't have to be long, and they don't have to be involved. Just say to God, um, Lord, you know, you already know my heart. You already know my heart's aching or whatever, or I'm joyful and thankful. So I just want to thank you and lift this up to you. Thank you so much. Or, you know, please bless me for this. Or you made this promise to me and please hold on to, or please uh, keep this promise as you said you would. Very simple prayers. They don't have to be long. They don't have to be complicated. They don't have to use big words. And they you can just be short and to the point because God already knows what you want. God already knows what you need. And God already knows all about you. So remember that as you pray. God bless. Have a great day and enjoy your prayer life.